All right, in this video, I'm going to be going over the basics of binary files. Um, I'm going to assume you have some knowledge of text files here, but if you don't, most of this is going to be independent. The first thing we want to do is include fstream up at the top. And then I've got a structure here called item. And inside item, I have an ID and I have a value. I have a constructor here that will auto generate an ID number. So I've got a static counter there that starts out at 100. Every time an item is created, it's going to bump that up by one. And then it sets the ID based on that counter. Remember, static integers are only initialized once. And then I've got a display function here that will show the item number and the value. With text files, we just write lines of text to a file, but you can also write objects and other binary data to a file. And so that's what we're going to be doing here in this video. So let's say, let's say I have an item. I'll call this item one. And I already know it has an ID number starting out at 101, but I want to set the value. And so I'll just set this to 29.99. And if I wanted to write this to a binary file, I need to create a OF stream, that's output file stream. And I will just call it out. And inside the constructor, I will create a file and I'm going to call it item data dot dat. You don't have to call it dot dat. You can put dot bin or whatever you want on there. It's just something that indicates it is a binary file. And then we put a comma and we put iOS out. And then you can pipe that with iOS binary. And that will give us an output file stream to store binary data. And what I want to do is I want to write my object to that file. And when you do this, you're basically treating the file as if it were memory, memory that doesn't get erased when the program closes. So to write this, we're going to write out.write. And you're going to put char pointer in parentheses and then the address of your object. So I've got the address of item one cast as a char pointer. This is another, another way of saying it's going to be a byte because the binary file is going to be written byte by byte. And then over here we tell it how much or how many bytes it needs to write. So this is going to be the size of item one. Size of is going to look at item one. It's going to see how many bytes are in there. And that tells the write function when to stop writing the data. It starts at this address. It writes for this far. Okay. And then we close our file. Out.close. Always close your file when you're done with it. And run the program and if everything ran successful you should be able to click on files or open up your project folder and see your item data dot dat file there mine was already there because I already rehearsed this but it should show up there regardless and if you were to open that you should not really see anything written in English you're not going to see the numbers there or item, you're going to see what the file reader has interpreted as binary data, usually gibberish. Okay, to read that back in, I'm going to comment this out. Now we're going to attempt to read back in the information we wrote to the file from item one. So we're going to create a new item and we'll call this item two. We're not going to set any values. We're going to read those in. To read those in, we're going to create an input file stream. And we'll 
call it in. We're going to pass it the file name, that same file. I would do iOS in piped with iOS binary. And then we're going to do in.read to read the file. And this looks like the out. It's going to be a char pointer cast on the address of the object we want to write to. So that's going to be item two. And then we don't know the size of item two because we're reading it in from an external source. But we do know the size of our structure here and it has to match that. So we just we can just say size of item. That will read the contents of the file into item two and this tells it how many bytes to read. And then if we wanna check and see if that works, we'll go ahead and close our file And then we'll call display on item two. And we should get the same values that we saved for item one. And there we go, ID 101 value 29.99. So that works just fine. Let's say we wanted to save more than one item. So I'm gonna comment out this part down here uncomment this and I'm going to copy a few lines here. We only need to open we only need to open the file once. We'll need to write multiple times and then we only need to close it once. So we'll copy that. Uh, before we paste it we need to create some more items. So item item 2 and we'll set the value on that one to something else, something unique. And then item three, just some unique values in there. And now, like I said, we've copied this. We will paste this a few more times. And we'll change our ones to twos and threes accordingly. Format this guy. And then close our file. Uh, so we should have three objects written to the same file. And now we're going to attempt to read those back in. Well, let's go ahead and run the program and let it do its writing. That seems to have worked. So I will comment out everything up here. And we'll work on reading it all back in. Now I called this item two and I already had an item two. So let's, let's change this to three or wait, no four. And we'll create item five and item six. We open the input stream. We're going to read in two more times. And this will be for five and six. Close the file and then we will call display on four, five and six. And if all goes as planned, we should see the same information that we wrote in up above here. And that works just fine. I am missing one decimal here on this value. And that's because I made that number too big and my float ran out of bits. If I had used a double, that would be just fine. Or if I had used a smaller number, it would also be fine. So that's how you would do multiple items, all from the same structure. And what if we had saved all three of those guys in there, but we only want one back? 
let's say I only want to retrieve item three from that file. I need to know it is the third item in the file that I'm retrieving, but let's get rid of five and six here. And for item four, I'm wanting to read back in the information I saved from item three. After I open my file, there's a function called seek G. And inside seek G, you can put the size of item. And that's going to tell it to move over that many bytes. So that gets us past the first one, but we need to go past the second one. So what you can do here is just say times two. So that moves past two items and it will start at the beginning of the third item. And that should read in item three here to our item four object, close the file and display that. So I'm expecting to see this value again. And I did something wrong, forgot a semicolon. Round two, there we go. So that's how you would navigate a binary file. It's, it's not super easy. You do have to keep track of what all is in there. It gets more hectic if your items that are stored in there or your objects that are stored in there are different sizes. Because you'll have to know from what order they were saved, how big each one is. And sometimes that data is written in the file itself. So when you read it back in, it knows where to look for things, uh, but it can get pretty complicated. Another thing to be aware of when working with binary files, they work pretty well with structures and primitive data types because these don't change. But if you start putting strings in here, like if I put string name, a string can be different sizes. And so it doesn't really know where to stop reading when it tries to read that string back in. Uh, remember, you're looking at the size of the base structure. And so all I can see is there's a string there, but it has no idea how big that string is. So unless you account for that and keep track of how big each string is and put that into your read operation, um, the size of the string is left ambiguous. So the binary file becomes difficult to work with if you're not working with primitive data types. Uh, that's it for the basics. There's a whole lot more involved with this stuff. If you start working with pointers, you have to remember that pointers are addresses and that when you rerun the program, those addresses are gonna contain different information. So using binary files and pointers is extra fun. I don't recommend it, uh, but this is how the binary file works in its most basic form.